Good afternoon, everybody. Hello, Nace family. It is so good to be back with you guys again for the fourth of our five-day series. Um, today, we've got uh, Renee Dallow, who is going to talk about uh, uh, connecting authentically through the camera, which is what I'm trying to do with you right now. Can you tell? Can you feel it no anyway so my name is keith willard i'm the president of the greater broward palm beach chapter of nays and uh kind of the, the the first of the brainchild behind trying to pull this together but honestly none of this would have been uh possible if it hadn't been for uh, megan ely who again i'm just gonna crush on a little bit she's like my new favorite crush because she has just done an amazing job with all of these incredible speakers she you know, when I when she sent out the, the the offer to have free speakers, of course, you know, I jumped on it and tried to say, well, can we do five? Can we can we have five? And of course, she said yes, of course, you know, because she's Megan. And and uh, speaking of Megan, she's going to be with us tomorrow, um, talking about the five highly effective habits of su successful people. So you don't want to miss that. That's tomorrow at three thirty. She's you know she's going to finish this round off like incredible. But first, I want to say uh, thank you to our NACE National Chapter for making all of this possible because they have given us the platform to be able to give this to you guys. And I really hope that all of you are um, taking advantage of these free seminars, free webinars, because it has been an incredible week of uh, information. Now, keep in mind, next week we will be um, sending out the links to the recorded program. So if you've missed anything this week, don't worry, we're going to be able to get that to you. You're not going to miss out on anything. You'll be able to go back and research and, and see these things again. Um, I also want to make sure that I say thank you to um, uh, the chapters in the Southeast that have been instrumental in promoting this. And that would be uh, the Charlotte chapter, the Northeast Florida, meaning Jacksonville chapter, Orlando, um, Greater Miami, uh, and the beaches, and Tampa Bay. Awesome. Thank you. I, we, Honestly, we wouldn't have had the turnout that we've been having if it hadn't been for the, the hardcore efforts. But let me introduce Renee Dallow. Renee Dallow is a wedding planner, educator, a public speaker, obviously, and a podcast host <laughs> with over 12 years of experience in the wedding industry and seven years running Moxie Bright events. Renee turned her knowledge towards the advancement of the industry as a whole and launched her top-notch educational resource for event pros. Amazing. In addition to her self-guided wedding management e-course, Renee is also the founder and host of the popular B2B uh, uh, podcast, Talk with Renee Dallow. Such a great name, you know. <laughs> I feel like that's a great name. And then currently, Renee serves as the president of WIPA, South California, and she is recognized across the industry, having earned covered spot on HoneyBook's 20 on the rise list, which I am like fangirling now at the fact that, <laughs> you know, you you are the top 20 on the, I mean, I was like, what? Oh my God, I'm so impressed with that. <laughs> so Renee, I'm so excited that you're here to help us figure out how to, connect more authentically through the camera. And I mean, it's a skill that we need more and more nowadays than ever. So ladies and gentlemen, Renee Dello. Hi everyone. Thanks so much for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Uh, I'm coming to you live from my desk in Los Angeles. Um, and for some reason, my slides don't wanna play today. So let's just see, we'll be through it. We're gonna go through it together, you guys. We're gonna see what happens. Um, <laughs> today, we're talking about how to connect authentically on camera. Um, and I wanna know in the chat, like how comfortable right now do you feel about doing this on camera? Like if a client said to you, hey, I wanna meet you, let's do a Zoom call on a scale of like, I don't know, one to five, tell me in the chat how comfortable you feel with that right now. And I'll so I'll we're getting my a lot of the chat. Well, it, unfortunately, sometimes the chat doesn't come through. So we're getting oh. a lot of like ones and threes one. and twos. Okay, okay. Got a four, right. and then okay. I'm gonna say five because I feel very comfortable. Yes. But, you know, well, yes. We well, you're you. You're you're different. <laughs> uh, so you already heard all this about me. That's a picture of me. That's my stuff. But we'll get back to that. Um, here's the thing. So I'm in Los Angeles, and we have been in quarantine now here for like um, 80 something days. I think I try not to count because it's depressing. But um, but it's been a while. It's been a really long time for us here, and um, at least for me, I don't think there's um, an end 
happening soon. I know for the where you are, for what I'm assuming most of you guys are in the Southeast, um, you're a little bit farther ahead than we are. But here's what I think is going to be true for the long term. I think um, so many things about life as we know it are going to change post COVID. But one of the things I think is going to remain is the comfortability that we all have with doing things virtually. And I think if you are someone in the event industry that is a service provider, um, especially because I'm a wedding planner, I can say this confidently for wedding planners. I think the days of us meeting our potential clients in coffee shops is out the window. I think that that ship has sailed. Um, as our clients get younger, and more adept at virtual things, they're going to expect the same of us. Um, now, again, you know I live in Los Angeles. Um, if you've ever visited my fair city, you know that traffic here is bananas, bananas crazy. And so really early on in my career, I decided that I did not want to waste my my time, frankly, um, traveling for an hour to go to a coffee shop to meet a potential client for 30 to 40 minutes to then drive an hour home, only to realize that they weren't a good fit for me or maybe i wasn't a good fit for them and then we've taken up three or four hours of my day with something that isn't going to pan out so years ago seven years ago i decided i was going to do skype consults so i don't leave my house basically um unless you're paying me so if you are a potential client the first thing that we do is now a zoom call and it's 30 minutes long and that's how i i vet people so I think if the if this situation has taught us anything in our lives, if you're not comfortable on camera, then today is the day that you change that because we are well past the time of you saying, well, I don't really feel comfortable doing that or I'd rather not, I'd rather meet you in person. You know, um, I think we're never gonna go back there. You know, we're not going back to that place of 100% in person. So let's get into it. Um, right now we've got, these are like the, the, the three big ones, right? Um, Zoom, obviously. How, how many of you wish you had bought stock in Zoom before this whole thing happened, right? Like they have taken over the world. Um, so Zoom is uh, arguably the most popular. And then we've also got Google Meet and then FaceTime. And we're gonna talk a little bit about Zoom and Google Meet. The reason FaceTime is on here is because um, it, it tends to have become like a shorthand for like, oh, let's just FaceTime. Um, and I don't know that everyone understands or realizes, or at least they didn't at first, that you can't FaceTime unless both people have an Apple product. So if you if you ask your clients to FaceTime or potential clients, um, sometimes the response will be like, well, I can't. And what we're trying to remove are like those barriers, right? We wanna remove all the friction, especially throughout the sales process. So don't ask if they can FaceTime, just like put that one aside. Um, try to change your vernacular to say things like, can we do a virtual meeting? Can you Zoom? Can you do a Google Meet? Um, and once you get comfortable using that language, then it becomes second nature. So real quickly, I'm sure you're all familiar with Zoom, but Zoom is web-based video conferencing. Um, you can get a free account. A free account gives you a 40 minute time limit on your calls. Um, and I think that's sufficient. Like if your sales calls are taking way longer than 40 minutes, then that's a different webinar that I could teach some other day. But um, <laughs> 40 minutes, you know, is sufficient, I think, for this. Um, if you have a paid account, then you get the ability to record, which I love. Um, I feel like as long as the person you're meeting with knows that you're recording, it's actually a really great tool for many reasons. You can record your sales call and then play it back to learn some things about yourself. Um, or you can send it to your assistant and say, hey, take notes on this, right? Like take notes on this couple, um, make sure that we have all their stats down, that we know what we're doing. And then you don't really have to worry so much. You don't have to take as many notes. Um, you should still take some, and we're gonna talk about that later, but it kind of gives you that, that safety net. And then the best thing about Zoom is that your attendees don't necessarily have to register. You can have them register if you want, but why? It's another barrier. To entry right um, and they don't really need to have their own zoom account they just need to click a link and that's why it's become so popular it's really easy super super easy um, i personally have a paid zoom account and i love it um it's like 12 dollars a month maybe i paid for the year it's a really easy good investment google hangouts has now become google meet it's the same thing um it's free if you have a Gmail account, either a Gmail account for business or a standard Gmail account, this is included. You'll notice it on the lower left-hand sidebar now. Um, you used to have to install a Chrome browser plugin. You still can, it makes it much easier to use, um, but it does integrate with your Gmail account and the Google Calendar. It is again, like 
almost no barrier to entry. And that's what we want for these, especially when we're talking about sales calls. We want to make it super, super, super easy, easy for the millennials and Gen Z to meet with us and not have to have them jump through so many hoops. Okay, so here's what you need. <laughs> you need a camera. 99% of the time they are built into your computer. Right now I'm looking at you, if you can see my face, I'm not sure, um, through the computer that's built into my Mac. If you don't like your computer camera or if you have an older computer that doesn't have a great camera, you can easily purchase a camera to attach to your desktop or laptop from Amazon super, super inexpensively. Um, you're gonna need a headset. Right now I'm wearing these little guys, but without a headset, um, you're going to experience a feedback loop that is really uncomfortable for your potential client or whoever you're in the call with. It gets real hard to listen to pretty quickly. Um, and that is the thing I see most people doing incorrectly in these last few months when they get on a Zoom, especially if it's with more than one person, you need to be wearing headsets. Um, oftentimes the person you're talking to isn't gonna tell you, they're just gonna do that thing where they wince every few seconds, right? Or after you talk, there's like a pause because they're waiting for the echo to stop. Wearing headsets will accomplish that. And you don't have to get these. These are pricey and, you know, and annoying because you have to keep charging them. Um, I don't know if you can see me, but I also have giant podcast headphones, which I sometimes wear on my calls because it's easy. It plugs in. It's a no brainer. Um, and also you're going to need some kind of microphone. Now your computer has a built-in mic. So don't go crazy thinking you have to buy an expensive mic. Um, I have a podcast, so I have this giant mic, um, which I don't know if you can see me. <laughs> so maybe you can't see it, but I'll show you later. Um, it's a big mic and you don't need that. You just need something. If you are using the headset that comes with an iPhone, the one that's wired, um, your mic is going to be on that wire. Important to note when you're doing a call, hold that, that wire away from your body. Otherwise, it's going to scratch on your clothing and it's going to sound like this. Do you hear that? It's annoying. And the reason I mention these things that are possible annoyances is because subconsciously they create friction. And we don't want that in the sales process. So camera, mic, and headset, you probably have all three. Just make sure you're using them. Like, because now I think the rules have changed where we all know this is the norm. So if you come on with a mic and your giant heads, headphones, no one's gonna be like, oh, they look like they look like a nerd. That's just what we're doing now these, these days. All right, this is my number one big tip. Well, there's two big tips today, but this is the number one big one. If you can, please hardwire your computer to your wireless router. <laughs> um, I do webinars a lot. I do a few a week and you have to be hardwired. One, because it just takes that nervousness off of your plate to think like, oh, what's gonna happen? Am I gonna be frozen in a weird, awkward position? You won't be, just get hardwired. Again, Amazon is your friend. It's like a $10 investment, maybe not even, depending on the length that you need. And you just hardwire that bad boy and then you forget about it. And it's the best thing you can do for yourself for peace of mind. All right, second thing, lighting is so important. So, and also your eye line. So your camera should be slightly above your eye level. Now, not so much above your eye level that you're tilting your chin up and all we're seeing is your neck, but also not so far below that all we're seeing is like seven chins. We don't want either one of those things. We want the camera to be slightly above your eye level so that you're looking out and slightly up. It's just a better position for you. Um, and then as far as how much of you should fit in the frame, um, and, and again, I, <laughs> I don't know if you can see me, but later when I remove the slides, you'll be able to tell. You really should be taking up the majority of your frame at a natural distance. Um, too close or too far away makes it really difficult to connect with you on either in either way. Um, and and we'll way, go over they, they, they can see you. They, they can. can see me. Okay, yes. good. So right now you're probably you're seeing me from like um, mid torso to the top of my head, and that's what you want to fill the frame. If I were to be like this, is not super awkward. Or if I were to do this, then I'm so far removed from you, right? And and it seems silly but it's a subconscious thing. You wanna be as present and as um, full in the, in the square as you can be. Um, and also you don't wanna be like off to the side, right? Like all these things are very strange. Just center yourself <laughs> in the frame. Now your lighting. 
so right now I'm being lit by three different lights. Um, your light source should be in front of you, but not directly shining on you like a spotlight. Um, and also natural light is best. So if you have a home or an office where you have a big, beautiful window, put yourself in front of it, relocate your desk. <laughs> Put your desk in front of that window. Um, I don't. My office at home is like a little tiny, it's like such a small room with, with short ceilings. So I had to create my own natural light. Um, I have a light above me on the ceiling, about 10 feet in front of me, and then two lights on the side that are not directly at, uh, on me, but facing my direction. Um, and I'll show you that setup in the next slide. So this is ideally what you want. You definitely want front lighting. Um, if you are backlit, then you are going to be so dark that it's going to be hard to read your facial expressions. And that's what we're trying to do with the video, with the video, we're just trying to connect. And so you have to be well lit in order for that to happen. Um, these two little lights that you see in the slide are available again on Amazon, um, and they're LED lights. And what's important about that is that they don't get too hot and then they don't make you sweat. <laughs> that's important too, especially as we approach summer. Um, especially in, I guess, Florida, I would imagine it's very warm where you are as well, whereas uh, it's warmer I am as well. Um, the other thing too about being pointed at you or overhead, um, if the light were pointed directly on me, then it would be too much light and it would be, my pupils would be overdilated and it would be like almost cringy. If the light were directly above me, I would have like weird horror movie shadows, <laughs> like horror movie um uh, down lighting. We don't want down lighting. We don't want any of that. So three light sources, ideally, but m more importantly, everything in front of your face. If you want to get serious, get yourself a ring light. So this one, what I'm showing you in the slide is a tabletop ring light, and it's designed to hold an iPhone. So it's designed to have a cradle in there. So if you find yourself doing um, primarily most of your video calls on your phone, get yourself this ring light. It's less than $100 now on Amazon. The prices have gone have gone way down. It's really worth it. I mean, you know, ring lights used to be only for like beauty bloggers and um, girls who put on their makeup on YouTube. Um, but now they're for everyone. And the thing about the ring light is that it is LED. It doesn't get too hot, but it's an even amount of light on you. Um, you know, this three light setup I have is a homegrown. So we worked hard on getting the right lights so that I don't look overly um, bright or washed out. But the ring light does all that for you because it's even. And all you need to learn how to learn what to do is how far away to put it from your face. Because you don't want it too close, again, because you don't want it to be overwhelming. It's funny, you were talking about Megan earlier. So I know Megan very well. And um, when the quarantine started we talked about her setup at home and i convinced her to get a ring light and then she bought it and immediately texted me going i can't use this it's too bright it's up in my face and i said well show me how close it is to you and it was way too close you guys it was like it was very close it doesn't need to be that close they're very strong <laughs> and most of them have dimmers so you can control that um but having said that getting used to the setup of the lights you know you have to get used to it it's not um it's not not, not that it's not normal but it's not ideal like i wouldn't be sitting here with all these lights on if i weren't doing this with you now right it's too bright um but you need it for on camera also cheat I'm about to show you a cheat y'all so if you like me have a really dark office or if you're like i can't i don't want to buy anything i don't want to invest the money on it i don't want to do any of these things fine if your face is not well lit or you find yourself in a different part of your house where there's no light, put a clean white sheet of paper on the table below you. So this is just like a calligraphy um, pad of paper and you just open it, put it on the table below you. And you can probably see the difference a little bit. I'm really well lit, so you might not be able to see it as much, but basically what you're creating is a bounce underneath you right, at the very least, or a white tablecloth will do. Um, and this is like so cheap. This is like $5. Um, and it just helps give you a little bit of balance, a little bit of light, it fills in the gaps. Um, and it can really help you out if you find yourself like stumbling into some bad lighting. It happens, it happens to the best of us. Um, now, <laughs> consider your background. I am very lucky that my husband loves me and this is a wall behind my desk and we've painted it and those are little stickers that he spent very, few hours putting on one day but like I said I've been doing these calls for years so really early on I thought oh god I don't want everyone looking at my messy office because if I turn the camera around over there it's a mess but here 
it's legit because we considered the background. So um, right now on Zoom, they've done us a solid where they've Zoom has given us green screen technology, which is great. Um, they have some built in or you can use your own custom background. You can get your logo, go to Canva. Um, and that's what that is on the top left there. You can go to Canva and look up Zoom virtual backgrounds. They have so many templates where you can put in your logo. You can do this cool like conference call bingo. You can keep it fun. If you're a, a photographer, an event photographer, um, put up one of your photos. If you are an event venue, put up a photo of your venue. Like make it relevant for what it is you do. Make it fun. Um, but consider that <laughs> we're giving our clients and potential clients like a view into our homes at this point. And so if you don't want that, that's fine. Just use the green screen background or set something up where you know you're gonna be doing all your calls from here. Um, Minted also has a bunch of templates as well. If you do weddings, wedding specific stuff, uh, Minted has beautiful backgrounds that coordinate with the stationery, of course. But if you know a client or potential client has a specific you know, vibe or style, go to Minted, download an, a background. You can All you have to do is upload it to Zoom. It's so easy so easy um and then this so if you are doing your calls on a laptop get yourself a big stack of books no one can see it and there's no shame in that game you have to get that that laptop higher than eye level you've got to get it up there um it's very tempting i know to like put it on a, on a low table and stick your head down it's not a good look so just get yourself a stack of books and make that your book pile for your sales calls and just know that those are the right books in the right order on the right table and just go for it. Um, absolutely no shame. You don't need to buy a different stand. I had someone email me after a presentation saying like, what stand should I get for my laptop? I'm like, all those books you don't read in your library. That's what you should get. Zero dollars. Okay. Now that was our tech. Now we're going to talk about ourselves. And before I get into this, I want to say this. Um, so much of the hesitation that I hear from people uh, involving video is they don't like the way they look, or if only I were 10 pounds thinner, or 10 years younger, or had gone to the salon in the last couple of months, right? None of that matters. None of that matters. Um, because it's most, what we're here for, what I'm encouraging you to do is learn how to connect, and the rest is just secondary. The rest is just gravy. So let's get into it. First of all, sit up straight. <laughs> this is a, I love showing you all the bad photos of myself. This is a behind the scenes photo from a sh video shoot that I did. And that is my warming my mouth up face. It's true. But here's the thing. Right now I am sitting straight up, like straight up. And my head is angled slightly forward. If I made a different choice to slouch and to put my head down, then that's a different look. And since I know you can see me, you can tell the difference between this and this. And once you practice this posture, this energy will become really normal for you. And this will be your video call energy. <laughs> and then the other energy can be your hanging out on the couch energy. Dress yourself well from the waist up. So I'm wearing legit yoga pants right now, no shame. Um, but I will say when you're on camera, you have to consider what you're wearing. So solid colors always look better than prints. Layers look best. Um, I like a little detail here. Do not wear a lot of jewelry. Don't wear anything that makes noise. So ladies with the long earrings, no. Tiny earrings, fine. Bracelets, no. Bracelets are going to get super annoying super quick. And the person you're on the call with isn't going to say, can you take off your bracelets? Because that's all I can hear. They're just going to be annoyed. No bracelets. Necklaces, don't need them. So consider everything you're doing super intentionally because you're also only being viewed like this, right? So consider it. Um, stripes, maybe not. Crazy patterns, save them for later. Solid colors, layers. Also, consider what colors you're wearing. So if I were wearing a bright white shirt, I would look really blown out because your camera on your computer is not the most amazing camera. It's going to pick up the brightest light. So if the brightest light is what's on your chest, you're going to look like you're glowing. Um, and then it's also going to throw off the, the light balance, right? So just consider all these things. Um, and also wear something that makes you feel good because you want to feel good when you go into these meetings. So this is the second thing I want you to remember from today. If you remember nothing else that I've said, 
first of all, hardwire your computer. I'm not going to let you forget that. Two, look at the camera. So right now, and for this whole time, I have been looking at this camera 98% of the time, right? This is me looking at the camera. This is me looking at myself. I'm going to do that again. This is me looking at the camera. This is me looking at myself. When you look at yourself and not the camera, it will appear to the person that you're talking to that you're not paying attention. Full stop. They won't, they don't read it as you looking at yourself. They read it as you looking away. <clears throat> and that's not what we want. We want to be looking at the person we're talking to 100% of the time, unless you're taking a note. We'll get to that in a minute. So it takes practice. It is not natural to look at the camera. I have a degree in acting, so it's more natural to me, but still a learned skill. Um, but it's, just, it's never been a better time to learn this skill because we're all at home and we're all doing these. So the next time you find yourself in a Zoom or any kind of video call, staring at yourself, cut it out and look at the camera. <laughs> Because you can still see the person you're talking to in your peripheral vision. It's not like you're checking out. You can still see them. But you want to be paying them more attention than anything else. So look at the camera. Train yourself to look at the camera. I know it's weird, but I also know you can do it. All right. For my ladies and my gents, and pres anyone presenting as any kind of any gender, you need a little makeup. And here's why. Because I just told you to light up your whole house or sit in front of an open window, and that washes you out. So you're gonna need a little something. Um, on purpose, I didn't do my hair for this because it's not about my hair, right? And it's not really about my face either. It's about the connection I'm making with you guys today. Now, to be honest, I put on foundation, I put on blush, I put on lipstick, and I tied my hair back in a messy bun. I don't think you need a full face of makeup. I don't think you need professional level makeup. I don't, don't even have mascara on today, y'all but you gotta put something on your face because you will otherwise look washed out. For the men, you might just need a little powder. You don't wanna look sweaty on camera. That's a thing that can happen, especially when you're under lights. So just consider these few things, these little tweaks, even if you're someone who doesn't wear makeup a lot in life, your features will get too blown out and then they won't be able to see your features. And we want, in order to connect, we want them to see your eyes, we want them to see your lips at the very minimum. Also, Zoom has a fun cheat. So if you go to Zoom under the camera, they have a touch up your appearance button, just use it. It's like a tiny filter. It's just like a little softness. It's not gonna take off 20 years. Uh, it's not even gonna take off some of the wrinkles, but it, it's, it helps you just feel a little bit better about the whole thing. No, no one ever got hurt by a tiny little filter. All right, now, active listening. So, Everything else I said is the prep. <laughs> this is the work. This is the work of a video call. This is the work of connecting. So active listening. It involves the listener, that's us, observing the speakers, that's our potential clients, behavior and body language. When you have the ability to interpret your client's body language, it lets you develop a more accurate understanding of the speaker's message. So one of the reasons I think I have such a high booking rate for my for my clients is that I've been doing video calls for years and ideally I want both parts of the couple because I do weddings on that video call because I not only do I want to hear what they're saying but I want to see how they interact with one another we can learn so much about another person based on their body language but in order to do that we need to be actively listening and watching not just waiting for our turn to speak or trying to figure out what we're going to say next so active listening is the biggest skill of a video call. And again, it's something that we have to practice. So here are some tips. In a video call, you need to give your clients, potential clients, both verbal and nonverbal feedback. So what does that mean? Um, verbal feedback is often difficult in a video call because there's sometimes a lag or sometimes they're talking and you don't want to interrupt them, right? So sometimes it's easier and more advantageous to everyone. If while they're speaking, you you smile a lot, like way more than you would in person, right? You wouldn't be sitting across coffee room with someone being like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. But on a video call, that's normal because you need to affirm what they're saying, right? And once they know that, that you're happy with what they're saying, they keep talking. And that's what we want. We want them to keep talking. Um, a lot of times in my video calls, I give a lot of nonverbal feedback. So like if they're, if I ask a question about their wedding ceremony, 
and they say something that I like instead of interrupting their train of thought with like a, with like, you know, a great, that sounds great. I like it. I'll sometimes just go like thumbs up or like, yes, or like, you know, just something positive that isn't, um, isn't my mouth. <laughs> a lot of times I'll just go, I just give them a raise the roof. Is it cheesy? Yes. Would I do it in person? No, never. But on a video call, it creates a connection right? You also want to be sure that you are actually affirming what they're saying, but keep it tight, keep it short. You want to say like, yes, great, correct, absolutely, yes, as they're talking, right? You want to keep affirming what they're saying. Mirroring body language, key. Um, almost every single time in a consult call, one person in the partnership will do, will like put their head on their hand or they'll, you know, touch their head or you know people we touch ourselves a lot we touch our we touch our faces a lot it was one of the things when covid first started everyone's like stop touching your face i'm like i don't know how i can't i do it all the time but when i see a potential client do it in a video call i mirror it because subconsciously that will create a connection with them i know it sounds sneaky but i promise you it works and once you get all these skills in your arsenal it will be second nature to you you won't even realize you're doing it until after you've done it it happens all the time now, especially it happens with women. So like women will be like this and then two seconds later, I'll find myself saying, yes, I agree. And putting my, it just happens. Um, also in video calls, it's very important to use people's names. So when I do a little, when I do a video consult with a brand new couple, I put their names on a post-it and I put it on my laptop, I put it on my computer. So that as I'm talking to them, I can say, you know what, right. You're, you're exactly right, Gabe. That's so, you know what, Christina, absolutely. Yes. Because again, we're trying to create this more authentic connection that's really hard to do on camera. And then as always in any sales call, but especially video calls, you wanna repeat what they've just said, summarize it in a slightly different way. Make sure that they understand that you are here, you're listening, you're present and you get it. It's really hard because there's no, there's no vibe, right? It's very hard to create a vibe um, or an energy between people through a camera. And so that's what all of these things are meant to do especially the smiling. How many of you, tell me in the chat, have been told or think you have a resting bitch face? It happens to the best of us. In a video call, you cannot be afraid to show your emotions on your face. Um, oftentimes, I think, of, I think in these video calls, oh my God, my face looks like it's rubber. Cause someone will say something or they'll be relaying a story to me that like is slightly, you know, not great. And I'll go, hmm, right. Cause I want them to understand that I get it, but I'm not going to go, oh my God, that's horrible. Right. I'm going to show it on my face. This is something you can actually practice in the mirror. I know it sounds silly, but if your resting face is a frown, you need to know that because they're going to see that in a video call and think, oh, she doesn't like what I'm saying. Oh, she doesn't, I don't think she likes us. Where that's not my, that not my, might not be the case at all. It might just be that that's how your face rests. And so you have to know, <laughs> and then you have to practice a pleasant resting face. And if you can't have a, ple a pleasant resting face, then you need to cultivate a small smile, a small smile face. Oh my God, words, what's happening today with my mouth. And that's okay. No one's ever going to be like, oh, she smiled too much at me. <laughs> That's not a thing, but they will say, oh, she, why is she frowning? Did she not like our ideas for our event? That's real. That's real. So don't be afraid. Use your eyebrows, use your cheeks, use your mouth, use everything here. Use your face. Um, Cause it's, you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong with that. Okay. So when you're doing, especially a sales call, it is important to set up expectations for how this is going to go. Um, I think now we have a lot more social constructs around a video call than we did even two months ago, but it's still important to set that up, especially if it's a, a sales call. So ways you can do that. Um, when my clients or potential clients book a Zoom call with me, they understand that it's a 30 minute commitment. I schedule them in a 30 minute blo block of time. I do my damnedest to get them in and out in 30 minutes. I do not want to waste anyone's time. And so, but that's on me because I'm the one leading the call, right? So when we get on the call, I thank them for coming. Uh, thank them for taking the time. I explain to them, it's going to be 30 minutes. I'm going to be asking you a lot of questions. You might not have all the answers and that's okay. And then I tell them, I am going to be taking notes on what you're saying. So if I'm looking away, it's because I'm taking notes. And I know it might seem 
like an overstatement to have to say that, but consider this. There's so many distractions in our lives right now, right? How are they to know that if you're looking away, you're not on your phone or talking to your kid or reading something? I mean, who knows, right? I mean, this phone is always near me. So, and they, and everyone knows that. Everyone knows our phones are attached to our bodies at this point. So I need to let them know that this phone is on airplane. And if I'm looking away, it's just because I'm taking notes because we have to set up the rules of this engagement with one another, right? Um, sometimes I say, if I think they're really nervous, like it's okay to interrupt me. Um, this is a free space, like feel free to share your mind. Um, and then I spend a lot of time active listening and I don't interrupt them a lot, especially if they're in a flow, right? I'm, I direct the conversation, I ask the questions, but then I let them talk. Um, and that's important too. In order to create that connection, they really have to feel like they've shared something with you. Um, but always let them know, oh, and then also this, like if we're in the middle of a conversation and they say, oh, we're considering this particular venue, do you know it? Um, if I don't, sometimes I'll say, you know what, let me look it up and I will literally narrate what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm opening a screen. I'm, okay, hold, let me let me find it, let me Google it. All right, oh, here it is, here it is, let me pull it up. And then sometimes I'll even share my screen with them so we can look at it together. So you have to keep the person you're talking to actively engaged in the conversation, otherwise they're gonna think you've checked out. And that's not what we want, actually, ever, ever, ever. Okay, back to what I said when in uh, midstream. If you feel self-conscious about being on camera, if you think, I don't wanna do this, I'm too fat, I'm too old, I'm too whatever, right? No one is thinking about you the way that you're thinking about you. <laughs> and I know that might, that might sound harsh. This is, a, this is a screen grab for my favorite TV show, Schitt's Creek. No one is thinking every, about you because everyone is inherently thinking about themselves. So when you're on a Zoom call with a potential client, you know they can see themselves too. And so while they're looking at themselves and you're looking at them, no one's looking at you. And that's just so freeing, right? Because you don't really have to, once you do all the prep work, right? You've got your tech got, you know, down, you've got your lighting good, you're wearing an outfit that you love and you have a little makeup on and you feel good and you know the setup, you know how you're gonna approach this call. You've done all the work. You've shown up as your best self. That's it, let it go, let it go. Because Ultimately, at the end of the day, especially if it's a sales call, what you're trying to make is a connection, which then makes a sale. <laughs> Everything else is extra. I don't need anyone to think I'm a beauty queen. It doesn't matter to me at all. It just matters to me if they liked me and I liked them and how are we going to work together? And all the stuff that came before that is just prep. It's just all the prep that we would normally do for a sales call, except now it's just right here. It's just right here. Um, so my encouragement is to go forth with confidence, armed with these tools so that you can feel great about showing up as the professional and the person you are and expressing your unique value to these potential clients and knowing that they're going to get it, you know, because they're going to get you because you're also going to show up for them. Um, we have time for Q&A. That is the end of my official slides. I'm trying to see if I can see. I can't see any Q&A. But before that, I will say this. Um, I put together a resource guide, which is basically everything we talked about, plus links to to purchase some of those lights, the ring light, the two LED lights, a microphone, um, a little web camera, anything that you might need. Um, we put it together in a resource guide. So if you just text 55444, the word on camera, you'll get that right to your inbox and it'll be easy breezy for you. Um, and so, so that's I, me. Yes. So, so by the way, when you were talking about camera angle, one of the things yeah. that I've gotten into do, so I just dropped my chair. <laughs> oh, like you dropped it lower? Yeah, so I just dropped nice. it a little lower, so that way I'm like looking at towards the camera instead. Amazing, so it's, see? It's an, it's an easy fix for me. I was like, it's like, okay, drop my chair. So, you know, a little yes. uncomfortable, but at least it's, it's, it's <laughs> at least it looks Did you have to drop camera. it super low though? Don't go super low. I know, Watch your back. Just, I know, right? Oh. And then um, also, I love the idea of the bracelets. By the way, that was a, a super bracelets. informative because I hit my desk all the time, and you can. Oh it. yeah, me too. I do it all the time. Yeah. Well, and you probably heard it too because um, this microphone arm that I have has started to squeak. Can you hear it? It's super annoying to me, and it needs <laughs> WD-40. But like, these are the things you learn once you do this a lot, right? Like, oh, those things are annoying. Yeah. Um, 
Well, and, and, and we talked about this before. It's like, you know, I, I put on a jacket. I, yes. I'm wearing shorts under this, and so that doesn't matter. But, you know, I've learned that, you know, you need to put on a jacket. And I, and I love the solid color comment. That was awesome. And then one of the things that I wanted to add to the, you know, reacting in the same kind of like touchy vibe that you said is also voice cadence. I've learned yes. that finding, flowing with whoever I'm talking to and matching their voice cadence. Yes. You know, because and if you have I to talk, be, yeah, yeah, because I talk typically really fast. But if I am talking to somebody that has a slower, like I, I slow down my speed so that way it matches theirs. I feel like that I'm helps all, a lot. And I'm originally from New York City, so I'm a very fast talker. I do the same thing, and I also, um, you have to be super self-aware for that, right? Because like you have to be able to hear yourself while while you're doing it and then also hear them and think oh they are a slow talker or they're a low talker have you right. ever had one of those where it's like they're whispering and you're like oh okay we're whispering oh today God. got it okay. driving, driving. everyone's well, whispering and one of the other things that i would uh, suggest for people is to record your voice and listen to it over and over and over until you get used to it because yes. there's something about <laughs> listening to yourself that just drives yourself crazy and you need to get used to your own voice because uh -huh. It, it you get to a point where you're like oh my god is that how i sound oh what is happening here and so Do you know why you that know, is can i tell no. you as a former musical theater nerd okay so oh when we're hearing when we're hearing our own voice we're hearing it be, uh, through the um through our skull right like oh. we hear the like the vibration of our own skull in our ears and other people don't hear that so that's why we sound different that's why your speaking voice or in my case like singing voice when you're learning when you're listening back to yourself singing it always sounds different than it sounds coming out of your mouth because you don't have your skull in the way isn't that weird that's true it though. is weird uh, and i love that that's the, i love that piece of information so i did a, the, the, I, there is a question it's um yeah you know voice call versus headset because all of these apps have an option to call through your phone do you find that one or the other works better I don't love doing any of these through my phone, um, mostly because I have this whole thing set up here with the hardwire, and I like the safety of knowing this is how I do this. Um, I don't, I don't love the phone. I, for me, um, I'm also a wanderer when I'm on the phone. I like to pace around the house, and I find myself like cleaning off counters. Like, what am I doing? Just sit down and do it. So I tend to not. I tend to sort of force people to do it my way. I don't like the <laughs> phone for that. I know now, I kind of do. I just go, this is how we're doing it. But with like these cords, so I've got these cords on. Is that, is that something that, is, should I go to wireless, you know, or is, I mean, is this still okay? It's totally okay. I mean, I think we're at the point now with all of this where um, it's normal. You know, I think for, if the wires are bothering you, if you're, if you fidget with them, then get rid of them. Right. Because if they're, bo if they're bothering you, then it's going to read on camera like you're annoyed or, or like it's bothering you and then it's going to bother them. Um, you know, I got these because they came free when I bought a new when I bought a new laptop. So I was like, let me try them. And now I really like them because I'm also again, I'm an Italian from New York. I talk with my hands. So when I'm wearing this guy, right, that has this long cord, every time I gesture, I'm gesturing <laughs> with the cord in my hand and it's annoying. So I only use these if I have to because they're right. also, look how big they are. Well, and, and, and most computers actually come with Bluetooth now, so it, it actually helps a lot. Yeah. They do, yeah, most computers are good. So Kathy, do we have um, um, questions from the audience? Yes, we have one question and one comment right now. Okay. So let's um, do it. The question is, how do you feel about sharing attachments screen during video calls? I'm into it all the time, yeah. Yeah, um, I, anything I that's going to help you get your point yeah. across. Yeah, just do it. But Although I will say for the most part, oh, I'm sorry, you go. No, no, you go. Um, a lot of times when I do that, I make sure to enlarge my my screen, enlarge the text, because I I don't know what how they're viewing me. So if they're viewing it on their little phone or their iPad, um, even though I can see the text is or or, you know, photo or whatever I'm showing, I make sure that it's big. <laughs> I'm right? also a little blind, so that's probably why. Well, and I actually make sure that I have all the things that I'm going to show on screen on in, in a separate folder so that it's easy for me to find because there's nothing worse yes. than like, oh, let me share my screen. Where am I going? Kind of thing. It's it's better to have a folder ready with everything in it. Or when you go to share your screen and you have like, it's like your messy desktop and you're like, just kidding. <laughs> don't look at all that. 
you know, or like you have it open to Banana Republic where you're like buying a dress. You're like, I'm just not, don't worry about that. Like, just make yeah. sure your, your stuff is in order. You know? Or your Amazon where you're trying to order a ring light, you know, that kind of yeah. thing. <laughs> <laughs> that, exactly that. Exactly. At least that's business related and not just like, look at me, I'm buying clothes, you know. Right. And then, um, so what was the comment, Kathy? Well, and then I have a question after that. Woohoo. Oh, good. Um, they were talking about when you record yourself and she said, um, this is why I love to play my Zoom consultation back. Helps me take note and make amends for future yes. Zoom. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I don't know if I can handle yes. that, but that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, as soon as you watch a few back, a few of them back, you stop looking at yourself as like you. It starts, you start becoming like something to study. It, it is, it's a weird disconnect, but it works. Well, and okay. one of the things that I would actually, and, and the, the reason I'm even thinking about this is because my computer just dinged me and it comes across. And so sometimes you have to remember to turn off your notifications on your computer because yes. it does come across on the phone call. And I yes. forgot to do that. So sorry. <laughs> and then and what then, was it, what, what was oh, the question? Uh, what brand of the headset are you using right now? Oh, these are, um, these are iPod pros i don't know what they're called oh, do those um they're work pro, on the computer? The pros. yeah because i i have some and i've been i didn't know that they would work with a computer yeah they i mean everything here we have everything is mac so they're uh, paired to my desktop oh. and then they come in this little case and then um the little case like charges them and it's good um yeah i really like these because i they don't fall out of my ear like the other ones because they have that little plastic piece so it's a little more tapered the regular um like iphone headset they always fall out of my ears always so these are the pros and they're i think they're really good they were pricey i wouldn't have bought them if i didn't get them for free with my laptop full disclosure but i'm happy that i have them well and these are actually the iphone cords that come with your iphone um the old ones where you had to plug it in and i love these yes. these are better than any of my other headsets so you know but i have i have a pc so i i don't think my iphone like you know cordless would work oh well, it would if it's because it's Bluetooth, so it might just work under the Bluetooth. I'll have to check that out. See? Check it out. Look okay. at that. And We're learning so many things. We're learning every day. Um, uh, so <laughs> let me just look, make sure I covered all the little questions I had. And then Kathy, are there any other questions at this point? We're good. We're good. Amazing. Awesome. So I cannot thank you enough, Renee. I learned actually a lot. And, you know, considering I've been doing this over and over and over, you would think like, oh, but I love, you know, the, the jacket with the solid colors. I think it's a, a love. I love that. I thank God you said something about the bracelets because our clients wear bracelets and it just drives me crazy. And it just, and of course, you can't say that to a future client like, hey, could you take off your bracelets? It's like, yeah, you're killing my ears. Can you make less noise? You can't really say that. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And I love I love the comment that she said, you know, look, you may not like the way you look on camera, but nobody else cares. They really no cares. don't. As long as you put yourself together and you look professional, you've covered it. Yes. So, you know, yeah. you, you and it's like we talked about earlier, like offline, you know, we we're talking about the fact that like, you know, in this new normal, we all got real comfortable with ourselves. And yes, I mean, it's true, right? And so, but you still have to show up. It's a meeting. It's still a meeting. And even though your clients might be in their pajamas, we can't do that. No. No. I no. Even we all might have had a moment. <laughs> oh, and we had another question. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's the best way to read a script but not seem like you're looking at the screen much? Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. So. I want to say I want to say don't read a script, but I know that that yeah. is probably a work in progress. Um honestly, you know what I would do is I would either either have your phone or an iPad or even a piece of paper, something that was at eye level but slightly off to the side. Um yeah. or sorry, not eye level but camera level. So like right now I'm looking at the camera, right? But if I had a script, like I'm right now I'm holding my phone up to the right side of my computer, right? So if I'm talking to you and I need to look at my script, then I would just kind of glance and come back. Oh, that's um, a good idea, hello. And so as long as it's on the same eye level, I don't think you'll you'll be have a problem. The problem comes if you're doing this and then this, and Which then I this. Which I did at the beginning, so super fun. It's okay, it's okay. But especially, but if you're trying to sell, you're breaking yeah. the connection, you're breaking the trust. Um, I would say try to memorize that bad boy and just, and if you can, I mean, if you, if you're allowed to, like just sort of 
improv it a little to keep it loose so that you're not having yeah. to like read because that's I think where we start losing people I mean I listen to a ton of podcasts I mean I have a podcast but I also listen I can always tell when the host is reading always even if they're incredibly skilled at it like Jenna Kutcher or Amy Porterfield I can tell when they have a script um because the pauses are I'm sorry not let, me, let me grab that name I, I just you drop you drop that name there I just need to <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know those ladies. Well, that's not true. I've met, I do know Amy, but I don't know Jenna. Um, I'm just saying, like, you can, they're very skilled. Right. And I can even, I can still tell. I'm like, oh, they wrote that. And and it's fine, but it just creates like a slight, um, like, yeah. just veil. You know what I mean? There's a, right. there's a disconnect, a slight one there. Well, one of the things that I learned actually during all these Zoom calls is I realized that my eyes were constantly shifting back and forth and that yeah. I was like, what, what am I doing with my eyes? I keep, you know, because I was in th thought process. And so yeah. I wasn't paying attention to where I was looking because I, I forgot that somebody's actually watching me. And so right. it takes a lot. It, it takes a lot to train yourself to focus mm -hmm. on this little dot and to make sure it, and to make it seem like it's a picture. So, so a friend of mine actually came up with an idea. He's like, oh, put a little happy face just below the camera lens. So that way you're you're looking yes. at something. You and know? you're remembering that you should like pleasantly smile. Um, I had a good friend of mine who's another wedding planner in my market. Um, she wasn't doing well with the Zoom calls at all. She was really just like, she was like, <laughs> I am striking out every time, like you have to help me. So we did a Zoom call. And what I realized is that um, she was making herself so nervous that her lips were shaking and she didn't, she couldn't tell. Oh, that's like, interesting. And like her lip was quivering, which is actually something that used to happen to me when I was a singer. If I would get really nervous before an audition, um, my I couldn't control my mouth, <laughs> which is horrible for a singer. You don't want that for a singer. It's no, no wonder why I'm not doing that anymore. But um, I said to her, I was like, oh, your lips are twitching. And she was like, what? I'm like, we got to figure this out because it made her look so nervous and so unsure. Of course, right. she wasn't closing those sales, right? Because it made her look like I didn't, she didn't know what she was doing, which could not have been further from the truth. I think we sometimes forget like the skill of selling is completely different from the skill of doing our jobs. Mm -hmm. Here's where we I, are. Two more questions. Well, and I, and I, I used to touch my face all the time during mm -hmm. a Zoom call. I mean, constantly. It was a nervous I tick. I still do. Like, yeah. rub my nose, rub my nose, rub my nose. So now I hold something literally in my hands. Oh, yes. So that way my hands are mm -hmm. purposely doing something. So I stop touching my face because I know. do that too I tend to fidget so like I don't know if you I don't, you probably didn't see this because it's below the camera but like I've been holding this the whole time for no reason because I like I need something in my hand to play with while I'm talking that's so funny <laughs> did Kathy did you say another question had come in two I have two. Oh, awesome all right the first one is what's a great way to wrap up a meeting when you're going over time but you don't want to be rude to the client oh. <laughs> no it's the best so when I start these calls I say Thank you for taking the time. This is going to be a tight 30. Don't worry. I'm going to get you out of here. As we get to the end, I will say, look, I don't want to keep you. Your time is super valuable, as is mine. We have about two more minutes. Is there anything else you want to ask me before we have to go? Like, oh, I lovely. just I just wrap it up. And, and if they say, no, we have more time, and you also have more time, then it's fine to say, yeah, we can do another five minutes, right? You have to put time, limits on it. Otherwise, yeah. especially if it's a consult, you'll be there for two hours and you won't make a sale. What is that? What is that's not a way to run a business, right? So I'm like super aware of the time at all times. But I've also, again, been doing this for seven years. So I've gotten my consults down to like a tight 30. Well, Less and if also, I don't think they're, they're and also <laughs> don't give away information. Like don't give vendor names. Don't give because they will go around you and book that without you. And you know. People aren't you gotta paying stay part you, of the process. Right? Yeah. You, people aren't paying you for the, the fact that it only takes you 30 minutes to do this. They're paying you for the 30 years or 20 years that it took you to be able to do it in 30 minutes. That is 100% correct. That's what I say. I say, because, you know, wedding planner, I say they're not paying me for the 12 hours I can stand up with a clipboard on the day of their wedding. They're paying me for the 12 years of experience that brought me here. So, yeah, I don't like wasting people's time. And I want to, and I also want to say in the call, like, your time is valuable, but so is mine because I'm training them how, uh, if we work together, I'm training them for how they're gonna teach me in the future. They're not gonna waste my time for the next year of us working together with phone calls that go on for seven hours. No. It's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh my, and I just got another one. Okay. Um, awesome. So, but I've got now, so now I've got two. Okay. So okay. what about Let's those who wear glasses? Is it considered rude? And how do you avoid eye glare with glasses? 
Oh. Not considered rude. Rock those glasses. Um, I would say make sure you do a, check the lights, check your lights so that the glare isn't bouncing off the top of your um, lenses and other. I sometimes no, I don't have my glasses in here. I'll, I'll, I have really bad eyes. So a lot of times I wear glasses. Um, you can get glasses that don't have the that have the anti glare. I know that's like next level. But if you make sure that the lights are not um, bouncing off your glasses as much as other as you know um i wish i could show you the lights here so like well, basically I, I, all the lights here are facing the ceiling they're not facing me yeah so i put on sense? glasses by the way so oh good i can't i still can't see you i need to get off you the see? well so and when i'm looking at it i can see the the glare coming off my glasses i just angle my face slightly downward and then it yes. gets rid of the glare and then okay Sorry. Oh, go ahead. No, it, next question. So this is kind of a comment. And so what I do as a wedding planner is prepare a presentation and send it to them two hours prior to the Zoom call. It's easy for me to share my desktop and we can both refer to it. If I need to read anything, I still have my eyes on the screen. I love that part that we need to let them know we would be looking away and taking notes. So guilty of that. That's I think what we I all are. Today too. I learned yeah. that because I'm very guilty of that. Yeah, and, and I, the thing is, for the most sorry. part, I think our clients think the best of us, but why not just give them that extra peace of mind? Right. So question, I actually have a question. So what do you do about wanting to drink something during the meeting? Because when I reach over here and I'm like, Alcohol. I mean, I don't think that looks great. So I'm like. <laughs> um, I, I would say I only drink when they're talking. And, oh, smart. And, and uh, this is a, I mean, I have this today, which I normally wouldn't have, but I'm trying a thing where I drink a gallon of water a day. It's annoying. Um, but normally I just have a clear glass like this. So I'm just taking a little sip and putting it down. I don't, I don't worry too much about it. I don't, maybe I should, but I don't, I just feel like we're humans. Right. And like, I'd rather drink a little sip than cough on their cough on mic, which I did during the presentation, but um, yeah, I don't worry about it too much. I don't eat. I mean, that would be, I feel like that would be gross, but um Plus, Imagine, can hear you like eating so a sandwich. Weird. I know <laughs> the sound of chewing is like the worst sound for me. I hate it the most. So I would never do that to someone. It's bad. <laughs> awesome. All right, Kathy, is that everything? It is. It is. Uh, thank you, amazing. I just want to say thank you again to Renee Dallo. Thank you so much for all. Thank the you for having me. Oh, amazing. It's it's good to be had, isn't it? Isn't it it's weird? That was so anyway, I just want to say thank you again to for all the information that you were able to disseminate for us and and get that out there because it's more important than ever that we are able to connect and and it's a it's a science. I mean, a lot of people think that you know it, it it's something that people are naturally able to do, but it's not. People have to learn these responses. So yes. thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm I, and again, I just want to uh, brag on Megan Ely for making this all possible. Tomorrow, you're gonna get to meet this giant of a person. She is amazing, and you do not want to miss this presentation. It's tomorrow at 3:30. She's gonna be doing the um, oh gosh, top habits of highly successful event professionals. I have seen this at a NACE conference and. I loved it so much. It was literally the first thing that I asked for when she came out with the idea of providing these free seminars. You do not want to miss this. It's incredible. And she is so funny. Oh, she is so funny and natural and easy. You're just going to love her. Not like everybody else hasn't been this week because honestly, Renee, you've been amazing. Christy was amazing. Like all these people, Kinsey was amazing. So, um, so thank you to everybody. Again, uh, I want to say thank you to our local chapter of the Greater Broward Palm Beach for um, helping uh, put all this together. Thank you, NACE National, also for giving us the platform to do this. And also thank you to the chapters of the Southeast for really promoting this because this has been a really successful week and tomorrow I know it's we're going to end on a bang. Um, all right, everybody, have a great day. Please stay home, stay safe, stay healthy. If you can't stay home, stay healthy. All right. And we will see you tomorrow at 3.30. Bye, guys.